Greetings, beloved. This is Tony. I've not did a video in a little while, and I just want to kind of show something that uh, I sort of looking at the other day. Uh, so much to share and tell, and usually my videos are only like 15 minutes long, so I, I just can't seem to communicate as much as I want to with everyone. But I want to share this quick thought with you. This is a temple. Okay? It's amazing. It's a temple. Okay? And in this world, we're taught that these temples are somewhat houses of God. I mean, I've been to church so many times, and I'm like, oh, don't do this, don't say that, shh, be quiet, it's the house of God. Well, that's so amazing. Okay? So I want to show you, let's say this building is... I'm just going to sort of draw this in as like the light, the house of God. And all of us are taught that God is like in some place, in some far away place. Well, what people are not getting is, is what Christ said, because Christ is telling you something completely different. And what I'm going to show you is when you believe that God dwells in a building, a temple, it creates a shadow. And this shadow would be called the ego, okay, or the antichrist, okay, the antichrist. Because this shadow is the authority, you see, it's the authority. It knows exactly what is good and what is evil. Okay? So in these temples, they teach doctrine. And a doctrine would be a belief, okay, a belief system of what is good and what is evil. All right? Well, this is, even though this is the way it happens in the world, it's the opposite of what Christ taught. You, you, you see, I, I hear, I've heard ministers and preachers and popes and, you know, all these guys, and, and they'll talk about, oh, God is in this faraway place. When God comes back. When Christ comes back. Well, Christ said, know ye not. Ye are the temple. Not a building. The body is the temple. Okay, so now when this happens, the shadow goes away. When you understand the light, okay, is within, the shadow goes away. There is no ego, okay? And it's, it's sort of hard to explain that because it's, it's actually overcoming the duality, you see the judge meant, judge meant, and I did a video not long ago, meant is difference, so judge difference, okay, but the amazing thing is, is God made difference, alright, so when you come to the understanding and accept what Christ said, know ye not, ye are the temple of God, the spirit of God dwelleth in you, okay? See this little cloud right here, okay? The idea, the light, right? And I'm just gonna sort of carry you out. It's so funny. They continue to do the buildings. Hold on one moment. Okay, so what I'm gonna tell you is, is these buildings are the establishments, all right? They establish difference, right? And what they're doing is, is they are per Perpetuating the knowledge of good and evil. Duality. Okay? And, and I'm just going to point out here, um, one column, two column, three column, four column, five, six. They'll always put six columns on the front of the building. And what it is, three columns are this, and the other three are this. Okay, and it's, it's the duality of things. Two sides to the same coin. And um, it's an amazing thing when you get it. 
you, you see, because here, here's the thing. Okay, let's say this is Christ. Well, Christ is telling you that God dwells not in the building. And Solomon, okay, we're going to say this is the temple that Solomon built. Solomon built the first temple. All right? But what I'm going to tell you is there are actually two houses of David. Okay? There's the house that David built for God to building. Okay, in several places in Scripture. Oh, I saw something really interesting just the other day. Oh. Uh, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. If you go on and read, the very next line in Scripture actually says, Christ entered not into the temple made by hands. You see, on the porch here is where he actually... Uh, Judge not least you be judged. What measure you judge by, you will be judged. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just highlighting these. Okay, but there are two houses of David. Now, I'm just going to do it like this. One house is the building. It's the temple. And this house actually has the priesthood of Aaron. Okay? And what happens is, is then this house is divided into a second house and what it is one is the priesthood and the other is the king it's a division of church and state alright now so that's one this is like the one but they're divided the other house I'm just gonna do it is this this is the other house Okay, and it is the priesthood of Melchizedek. Okay, and Melchizedek was both. He was priest and king. You see, the two are one. The two are one. He's priest and king. Here is the priesthood of Aaron, and Aaron is the priest in the temple, and then there is a king, and there is a division. Okay, so even in our society today, you see, we have uh, all the religions, but they sign a 501c3, which is a submission to the king for tax favor. Now, here's another amazing thing. These boys here, this one, you pay a tithe of all increase. This one you pay a tax on all increase. And the priesthood of Melchizedek, Abraham tithed one time ten percent. So when you really go back and study your tithing, there is the tithing of Abraham to Melchizedek and he tithed one time ten percent all he had. Then Jacob tithed 10% of all increase. And that's the most amazing thing. I mean, for me, this is how I see that. God, give me $100, and I'll give you 10 back. You get 90. But in the other, in the priesthood of Melchizedek, it's only a one-time tithe. All right, so most people, though, it, it's they, they really have no idea this, this is even taking place in Scripture. You see, and then the shadow is because of the belief of the light, God, dwelling somewhere else. But that is not what Christ taught. He taught that God dwells within. Now, this is where I'm going to take you. <clears throat> For years, I have done a lot of video about the imagination. <clears throat> now, I've shown you in Scripture how this word shows up 20 times. Then I have shown you synonyms. Different words, but they mean the same thing. And these words are thinking, thought, mind, and consciousness. Now, these words are in Scripture all over the place. So it's, you know, another 
600 times here, 700 times here, 400 times here. You know, this is not so many, but it is in there several times. So then, Scripture is a l mostly about the imagination of men. Well, that's what this is. This is the idea of the imagination, okay? And it's always in a cloud, you see, which is the same description of God in a cloud. Well, you know, I don't know, I always think of this. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. God was in the Word, and the Word was in God. Now, I'm not telling you that God is imagined. I'm telling you God is the source. Now, these boys here take what I would call your divine spark, okay? Which is the imagination, and they bind it in a box. You see, they limit it by doctrines and beliefs. And you see, these men that sit in these temples that claim that God lives in it, all right, is actually referring to themselves. You see, they are the authorities. And an authority, author, reality. Now, I did a video a couple of weeks back. Uh, we have a law. And the Jews said, we have a law. And by this law, he must die for claiming to be the Son of God. Well, claiming to be the Son of God, you take all authority from the men that dwell in the temples where God dwells not. It, it's, it's too much to cover in, in a video. It's just simply too much to cover. Okay? And, and what I'm going to tell you is, is um, also... People look for evil in what's called the six directions, north, south, east, west, up and down, but they never look within, and that would be the seventh direction, okay? Then I'm just going to say one other little thing here. I heard this several years ago, and when I first heard it, I thought, oh my, man, oh, that's Satan. That's the most, oh, that's evil, evil, evil. But over the years as I've worked through it, I've come to this understanding and it, it makes perfectly good sense. And here's the thing. The whole of the law is do as thou wilt in love. Do what you love and bring harm to none. The whole of the law is do as thou wilt in love and bring harm to none.